so you can control your mic over there, right? Cool. Welcome to the WMNF afternoon call-in show, the last call. I'm Sean Canan. In a moment, we'll open up the phone lines. We're going to take your calls at 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions or comments to dj at wmnf.org. And before I forget, I want to tell, us, tell you a, a traffic incident that I just learned about. About a half hour ago, the eastbound lanes on I-275 of the Howard Franklin Bridge were blocked because of a fire at the east end of the bridge. So I'm, I have to tell you, I don't know if that's cleared up. You're welcome to call in and tell us. But the eastbound lanes, I-275 of the Howard Franklin br Bridge were blocked because of a fire at the east end of the bridge. That was a half an hour ago. Well, the Republican National Convention is going on this week amid a flood of security and a relative trickle of protesters, and we'd like to hear your thoughts. Today we're going to talk about one of the national groups that came to Tampa to protest this week, Code Pink, Women for Peace. That's at 6 o'clock. But first, we're going to look at the legal issues that protesters are encountering. Our first guest today, we have both on the, in the studio and on the phone, National Lawyers Guild Mass Defender Co Defense Coordinator, Abi Hassan. Welcome, Abi. Hello, thank you. And also we have on the phone, Executive Director, I believe is your title, Heidi Bogosian. Thanks so much for joining me, both of you. And maybe we'll start with Abi because he's been on the ground in Tampa this week. There have been really not very many arrests. So tell us how that, the number of arrests and the number of confrontations has compared with previous large security events. So, uh, yeah, I think there's been about two arrests that, um, that are really protest-related arrests so far, um, which I'd say is significantly less than some of the major events that we've seen, um, especially as compared to, like, the 2004 Republican National Convention or, um, you know, any of the other, even NATO in Chicago of this year. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's you know, there's not as many protests at the, at protesters at this as well, so I think that has a lot to do with it. Do you think that that's, um, what about the police presence? What can you tell about the police presence here as opposed to these other places. I know that the people in Tampa are kind of thinking, wow, this is something we've never seen here in Tampa. The number of police, the type of uniforms they're wearing, the type of weapons they're, cover they're carrying, that's something we've never seen, but then again, we've never hosted a convention or, or something like that. How does this compare to, say, the NATO protests and so on? So uh, I think it's, it's actually, when, when, when these things happen in major cities, I'm looking at the numbers here, um, you know, the RNC in 2004, we saw about 36,000 police. Um, I think we're looking at about 3,400 here. Um, the Bush inauguration saw 13,000. The 2008 RNC, we're about the same numbers here at, at 3,500. Um, the G20 in Pittsburgh, which was another major event, um, we saw about 6,000. So this is maybe on the lower end, but the, num the amount of money they've spent and the level and you know the high tech nature of the equipment is 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 ramped up for for Tampa. I mean, if you go downtown, you see all the streets are barricaded with eight to ten foot mobile barricades. Um, you see windows up to the second story completely boarded. Um, you know, with with armed police standing in front. It's it, it really feels like you're inside a prison to be downtown. Very few um, civilians. You know the most people have been told to take the week off work. Not a lot of people downtown. Um, it's really turned the downtown into a, a fortress type. You know, it. You know, I've never been to Baghdad, but it, it has a feel of like a green zone or something that it's just, you know, ready. It, it looks like a like a like a military fort. Heidi, do you have uh, any experience with previous demonstrations? I'm sure you do. And, and how would you compare what's happening now in Tampa to the legal issues that are in the, that you've encountered before? Drag is quite typical of what we've seen over the years at national special security events. We've seen illegal crackdowns by police that have really become increasingly extreme and codified as part of the cost of doing business at these events. Um, a lot of this started at the WTO protest uh, in 1999, and what I think people don't hear, they hear the police narrative of what happened, but they don't hear of the thousands of 
of $1.4 million in losses settlement. I think what we saw in Tampa weeks and months before really, and we spoke to a lot of people in the street, residents who said that they were uh, terrified of rumors of the so-called anarchists coming to town, uh, businesses were boarded up, people literally left town. Um, so I think what happens is we've seen the kind of expenditures that Abi mentioned, an increased militarization, and then a police force that really does a good job of frightening not only local residents, but people coming into town from around the country to protest. And had it not been for the storm, uh, we don't know how many people would have come. I, I understand that many buses uh, planning to bring people from out of town were turned away. But I do think that we see exorbitant expenditures, uh, an overreactive uh, number of law enforcement agencies, and a lot of rhetoric really vilifying protesters. That's the voice of Heidi Bedrosian. She's the executive director of the National Lawyers Guild. We also have Abi Hassan with the National Lawyers Guild. He's a mass defense coordinator here in Tampa. And I want to go to the phones and, and get your response to what's happening in Tampa. What are your observations? Do you have questions for the National Lawyers Guild? The number here is 813-239-9663. If you'd like to, you can email us at dj at wmnf.org. We have Tom in Clearwater. Hi, Tom. The, the lawyers are on the air. We're going to keep this on the topic of the Republican National Convention and the protests in the street. If you'd like to call in, 813-239-9663. Sorry, 813 you can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. And Heidi, I want to follow up with something you were talking about a minute ago, and that was how the city of Tampa prepared, how they spent the $50 million that, that came from the federal government on security and put up all these barricades, as Avi was mentioning, and how it's created kind of a fortress, is that, you know, they might say, if, if there ends up being not much, uh, not many arrests, they might say, well, then that's the model we should do. We should do the fortress model. We should do, next time there's a convention, we should, uh, you know, have, have the same type of thing. What are, what's your thoughts about that? It's here to stay, and we, we saw it in 2008, and this was cities at the RNC, I was there, and the area around the uh, convention center was really a ghost town. You couldn't get in. Um, the problem, I, I think, I multiples, but with this I don't model, the it sends a message that yeah, go ahead and do as many as you want. not tolerated in a given jurisdiction. Uh, people in New York in 2004 at the RNC were mass arrested. 1,800 people arrested, detained in uh, a sort of here that had chemicals on the floor for days. So the judge had ordered the city to release people and they delayed in doing so. We're still settling lawsuits about that. We also saw, and we see at a lot of these events, the use of agents provocateur. Um, and I, I think the problem with that is that it, it reinforces the negative image of uh, protesters as being sort of a fringe element, um, a threat to democracy, when in fact the kind of fortress uh, scenario that we're erecting at the city not only chills free speech, but uh, in part speech, you know, in the tens of millions of dollars, money that could be used in a much better 
his way home trying to get sushi, the police arrested him. They doctored their videotape of the arrest, and it was only because a group called Eyewitness Video had taken that same few minutes and was able to prove that he was just standing there that we saw really, I think, uh, a lot of unlawful actions on all parties involved, the DA, the police, to again reinforce these negative stereotypes. And I just think it's a waste of resources. You know, that's something that we haven't seen yet in Tampa. We haven't seen the agent provocateurs that you mentioned. And part of it might be what you're talking about, about the, the video cameras now. There are video cameras all over the streets. Isn't, isn't that right, Abby? There's almost every, you know, a lot of the protesters have video cameras. Many of them are live streaming. Yesterday we were watching a, a, a four-part live stream where there were four different angles of the same protest on one screen. I, I know that right now there's a march down, I believe it's Main Street in West Tampa that started at Romneyville. And the reason I know that is because it's on the live stream. What's your experience been of the protesters out there in the streets kind of realizing that if they catch the things on camera, then that's kind of protection for them? Yeah, I think that that's, that's something that's really a revolution in, in street protests and something that we're seeing more and more of at every protest. And frankly, you know, it, it's it's definitely gotten a lot of people off, right? Like, it, it, it's exposed some of the things that we've seen of police overcharging and um, and absurd charges and just made up charges that, that, that happen. So it, it's been, it's been a, a real boon to defense attorneys um, who do this kind of work. And I'd also um, like to point out that there's a, there is a serious legal threat in some places to these kind of laws. For example, Florida, has an interpretation of a, I, I'm not sure exactly the, the, the term for the law, but it's, it's basically like a wiretap law that requires all parties to, to consent to being recorded, audio recording, right? They've been, some courts have interpreted that to mean that you cannot record video of police performing their public duties. Um, that, we haven't seen anything of, of that here at this protest, but that's something that's out there. There was a really bad decision in Chicago on the same thing, but that was luckily reversed, where police officers were literally arresting people for videotaping them in public. So these are the kind of things that are, I think that are on, on the, that are on our radar and are really important for advocates of free speech that, that we be allowed to videotape our public servants performing their, their public duties. Let's hear what our listeners have to say. If you'd like to join this conversation, the number is 813-239-9663. You can also call us at dj at wmnf.org. My name is Sean Canan. I'm the host of Last Call Wednesday, and this is our special Republican National Convention show. Joining us is on the phone Heidi Bogosian. Bogosian, I'm sorry, Heidi, um, the executive director of the National Lawyers Guild. We also have Abi Hassan, the National Lawyer Guild's mass defense coordinator, here in the studio. And Ethan, you're on the air. Do you have a question? Hello, good afternoon. Two questions, one for you. Do you have a Twitter page or Facebook page on that we can follow? Well, I, I tweet and uh, Facebook on the WMNF News sites, and so Twitter at WMNF News, it's all one word, um, those eight characters. And I'm also using the hashtag WMNFRNC. And our Facebook page is facebook.com slash WMNF News, all one word. Two guests you have on, and thank you for having us running on. For the lawsuits that have been settled in the past, I don't know if you've the one number, dollar amount, the lady just identified. I don't know if that's still the name of Goodwin's case or not. But that dollar amount that she's talking about, can she or someone? Uh, some details say what government level paid that fine, was that a local city, municipality, city, state, federal? And if so, local municipality, was it a police agency or was it the city who paid for that? And the second part was these attorneys, were they involved in any of those cases? That I think Heidi sounds like she wants to answer this. And then I, I can say something else. Okay, pay. it sounded like she was about and to answer them. So. I want to clarify, I'm not an attorney. So. Um, I can say that, and we have really multi million dollar settlements going back to things like um, an immigration demonstration on May Day in Los Angeles where the city 
Okay. Great. Los Angeles paid out nearly $13 million. You, can you see, point to the buttons, the mic buttons. In, uh, can you see those, those three buttons? Where she is. If they're red, the, the mics are on. If they're not red, she's turned the mics off. If you need to talk or something. So she's, she's got the same numbers. So I think okay. that's she's going So you're, she's doing that right now. Yeah. I'll probably just go to right to the next caller then, because we have a bunch of calls. So it's the city that's usually paying these settlements. In that LA case, one of the issues was that helicopters flew above so close to the so protest. So our that, guest um, might be call, coming, or she might call her. I, I have one I can That's add one to of this. The you'll oh, see just this a device, long range acoustic device, and I believe they have several available in Tampa, where they can not only emit a shrill noise that can cause permanent hearing damage but they also issue pre-recorded dispersal orders. And basically that is so that the city can say, uh, they so heard our second, order to destroy. Sure, it's a victim self-liability for this. The policy one can help you, the other one is that that yeah, Right. Now, it's worth noting that in terms of insurance policies that these cities take out, I believe they took out a $15 million police liability policy in Tampa. So it's worth noting that during national special security Next events, time I want to call the guest. Would that be okay? To the equation, the you fact that they Next will time be I want to call the guest. Um, okay, how about food. So they take out insurance to put them on six? and then I think they say well, from there, the so they can be on a separate line from the Oh, from the, I didn't you know, know, know that. I'm yeah. sorry. But if we lock people will you up tell that when Ray calls? We tell her, ask her to get her number and ask if you can call that? Protesters out of the eyes of the delegates and the national media. I didn't realize you could do yeah, that. Yeah, that's so. why I'm saying they buy those because it's raising their hedging their expense. But is that a federal grant or a funding or premiums they're paying on this insurance policy for taking? You know, um, okay, I don't know who the insurance policies are taken out, who pays, you know, where they're from, but um, we've seen it over the years. I can't remember in New York they took out a large one for the RNC. Um, All right, I'm going to presume it's probably federal grant money going than local state municipalities. But I wonder what the insurance company is banking that money. I would love if you could, if you know, if you could tell us about the insurance company. Thank you for that call, Ethan. Appreciate that. We're going to go back to the phone lines in just a second, but I just want to let you know that you're listening to Last Call on WMNF Tampa. We're speaking with Heidi Bogosian, with the Executive Director with the National Lawyers Guild, and Abi Hassan, a Mass Defense Coordinator with the NLG as well. And we'll go now to Greg in Tampa. Hi, Greg. I've got two questions. One is really a lot of the local businesses in the area seem to be excited at the prospect of the the Republican National Commission to take a few more dollars for their business. But with downtown being blocked mm -hmm. off like a fortune for prison, is it really is that something you could answer? Well, before I answer that, I'd just like to say that um, I can't The current caller? What's his name? Do you remember? I'm going to put her on. I like to get a mix of 
you know, know voices and yeah. more and frighten so that they uh, closed down. I know in Pittsburgh at the G20 summit, we went downtown and cars were literally bored as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I can say something on this. Okay. The, the address this and it should be a time when businesses uh, profit from all the. And Avi, you have something to add? Yeah, I, I think that two things. One, um, the 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 security apparatus is such downtown that it is not a pleasant or convenient or um, it, it's not a place for locals to be. I I was on the big march on Monday um, and uh, we were observing and, and you could see just a just a couple dozen locals kind of peering through the giant fences. Um, and 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 I'd add one more thing to that 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 the the way these conventions are run at this point, there's so much corporate spending, and um, and massive parties. You know, AT and T just threw a multi-million dollar party. And there's so much of that stuff going on that that does affect that does help small businesses, local business in some ways. But a lot of them, a lot of the business is being sucked into these giant corporate events. Yeah, and a lot of residents are being inconvenienced as well. We're going to hear a story about that later this week. 813-239-9663. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. And I'm trying to keep up with the, the emails as well. We're going to go now to Michelle in Treasure Island. Hi, Michelle. Hi there. Great coverage. Thanks. Do you have a question or a comment? Comment. Um, I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm on CI. Michelle, let's. Yeah, Michelle, let's see what Avi yeah. has to say about that. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I think you make a good point that they. Uh, I can go through some of the numbers. They've spent two million dollars on hotels for out-of-town police. They've spent over a million on catering to feed the police. They've spent about. Um, 600,000 to reimburse um, local St. Petersburg police, 278,000 on buses to move the police around, about 2 million on protective gear, half a million on new uniforms, half a million on gas masks and uh, radios. Um, so, you know, they, they have all these new bicycles, they've got a tank, they've got, a, they've got all kinds of, they've got a Segway, they, they got 200 new bikes for $300,000, um, seven Segways. They've got these like motion chariot things. They've spent about $40,000. About, well, I mean, so the reason why you see them, Yeah, I, I think.
Yeah, so I think the dynamic the dynamic we see is, you know, they have all this stuff and they have to use it. You know, they gotta go, <laughs> they gotta show that they're they're doing something. Um, like I said, there's been about two arrests, so at this rate that's about twenty five million per arrest that they've spent. Um, but you know, and that's that's kind of what creates this scary dynamic. I mean, you know, to echo Eisenhower's uh, um, famous speech, you know, it, it's it is a police, a militarized police industrial complex. Like they they start creating these things, they start militarizing the police, and they feel a justific they feel a need for justification, and um, the, these things kind of perpetuate themselves. All right, thank you so much for that call. Did, I'm sorry, Heidi, did you have something to add? Said. All right, let's go now to Edward in Palm Harbor. Hi, Edward, what's your observation? I've been listening to the coverage for the last few days, and uh, i got to say that I don't, I don't particularly agree with all of the things that the protesters are protesting or not. But I do understand that the protest has never been as part of the whole process as the election or the convention. It's important. But I do. And, you know, in light of the things that have happened in other cities that will protest, protest is great. They have, it, it's not part of peaceful political protest. Destruction of personal and public property, that's not part of the game either. And I've got to say that I'm proud of this city. And I'm proud of the police. I think they've done a fine job. My wife and I, we go down there, we want to see. And what we saw, I, I, it makes me proud. I'm proud of the police. I'm proud of our city. And I'm proud of the protesters as well. And, and as I listen to the week, it almost, I almost think the disappointment in the local areas that there has not been more vacant and that disappoints me. Thanks, Edward. Thanks for that call. Heidi? That comment. I think that um, the problem of 